13. Resetting your router. All right, um, we've been kind of fooling around with a lot of things on the router. So I'm going to reset it. I'm going to look at configuring some interfaces. And to do that, I'm just going to say erase uh, startup config for the startup configuration. And if I do this, then I can simply reboot it. And then don't worry, I have to worry about saving it. Um, I'm going to confirm. This will just reload it from a default state. Notice what's going on here, that I've cleared it. And this will basically get rid of all the, the, the past changes that we've made as far as passwords and things. and Kind of let us start with a clean slate, but... Fourteen. Selecting and configuring interfaces. Examples would be NF00 or NS000. First, we're going to do fast ethernet. Now that we're back at a default configuration, let's configure our interfaces on the router. So I'm, and I'm just going to go enable, go to privilege mode. And inside of privilege mode, if I show the running configuration, notice that the passwords are all gone. We reset it. And I don't have a host name, and there's no IP addressing or anything set up on any of my interfaces. And also, they're in a shutdown state. In this case, shutdown, shutdown. Let's scroll up here. Shutdown and shutdown. Okay, so just like if, if you were in Linux and you would use if up or if down to enable or disable an interface, or in Microsoft you'd right click and you'd say enable or disable on a multi-home computer if you had different network interfaces. You do the same thing on a router. So we start out and they're in a disabled state and we have to enable them so they can actually work and also give them some IP addresses. But again, that was the show run command, but I can also use show interface and I can specify fast ethernet zero or the shorthand f zero forward slash zero. And if I did that, Notice it tells me up here, I'll move the mouse cursor. Fast Ethernet 00 is administratively down. Line protocol is down. So that lets me know that that interface needs to be enabled if I'm going to use it to connect. So to begin the process of configuring IPs and things and enabling things, I need to go to global configuration mode. So config T will bring me into global configuration mode. Now I want to select an interface and I could type out the whole keyword interface or I could just say ENT and then specify the shorthand F00 instead of typing out fast ethernet zero. Notice the command prompt changes from config to config dash if. And now that that has changed, I need to go in and actually specify an IP address. 15. Specifying IP addressing on the selected interface. Examples, IP address, description, and no shutdown. Now the IP command has many different options in the Cisco IS. And if I hit the question mark, you can look at some of these options here, all of these different options. But specifically what I want is IP address, and I'm going to specify 199.207.13. I'm going to use this as a gateway, 1. A class C subnet, 255.255.255.0. And now I've set the IP address. And another thing I can do on one physical address, I can set multiple IPs or multiple subnets. So I could do it again. I could say IP address and 199.207.14.1. Remember on a class C network, the first three bytes or octets are the network portion, the street portion. And the last octet or last byte is the host portion of the address. So I can specify a subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. And I just need to use this command. I need to postfix it with secondary. If I didn't, it would simply replace the 192.0713.1 one with 192.0714.1. But this way, I'll actually have two IP addresses on that one interface. And I can also configure a description. And I could just say um, connection to the internet or banana or whatever you want to call it. But that will be my description, connection to the internet. And the only other thing I want to do now, remember it's still disabled. It's shut down. So I just want to use the command no shutdown, or for short, you can just type no shut. And uh, of course, don't make a typo there. You might be no, well, well anyway, haha, <laughs> just a little joke. <clears throat> might say something you don't want to say. But anyway, no shutdown or no shut. And it brings the interface up. I, I was trying to be entertaining, sorry. Okay, so, oops, thought I was in Linux mode again. Let me exit out of here. And let me exit out of global configuration back to privilege mode. And let's go ahead and look at the running configuration now. And we'll look at the interface configuration as well. So if I show run, I can go through and 
Let's look at fast Ethernet connection zero zero, and let me just kind of scroll up here so I can get everything on in one little section or category. But notice here that for fast Ethernet zero one, it's shut down. Notice that's not the case for fast Ethernet zero zero. So we know that it's up and it's running. Also notice that here's my secondary IP fourteen one, and here's my primary IP thirteen one. All right, so those are up and running. And go down there's my serial connections and you know no passwords or anything and again let me just run through that 16 setting the router's host name and here's my host name is router okay what let's let's modify our host name as well config t i'm going to go into global configuration mode and we're going to use the host name command we're just going to call it battlestar1 Okay, and then we will exit, and yeah, I know that's dorky, but hey, whatever. Um, and again, if I were to show the running configuration, now there's my host name, Battlestar1. So we looked at setting the IP address, setting a description on the IP address. In this case, there's you know, description connection to the internet. Setting the host name, when the interface is shut down, use the command no shut or no shutdown to bring the interface up and kind of power it up and activate it. Um, and in addition, let's, let's take one more look at the show interface command for F zero oops zero forward slash zero and again now it tells us that it's up line protocol is down but fast ethernet zero zero is up and then these are all the stats for that particular interface 17 selecting and configuring a serial interface note remember that serial connections require a dce or data communications equipment and a dte or data terminal equipment end this is determined by the type of adapter or cable connecting to the serial port. The DC end of a connection sets the clock rate and path for data. By default, Cisco routers are set as DTE devices. This is fine for perimeter routers that connect to CSU, that is channel service unit, and DSU, that is data service unit equipment from ISPs. However, routers that interconnect with other routers using serial connections must be configured with one end as DCE and set the clock rate for that connection using the command clock rate. Now let's configure a serial connection, which is a bit different from a fast ethernet connection. Recall there's a CSU and a DSU when setting up wide area networks. CSU stands for channel service unit and DSU stands for data service unit. There's also a DTE and a DCE. DTE stands for data terminal equipment and DC stands for data communications equipment. By default, all Cisco routers are DTE devices. So that means they rely on DCE devices to provide the path for communication and to provide the clock rate. Now you'll have some configurations um, on your private networks where you have several routers interconnected. So although some of them may be set to the default DTE, you'll have to configure at least one or more for a DCE connection and they'll have to provide a clock rate. So we're gonna do that in our router simulation software right now. And so I would just do that, I would, if I were connecting here, um, let's say for slot zero. So zero, zero, zero. Instead of the default DTE, I'm going to select, in this case, DCE. And then I would go ahead and you know, connect here to serial zero, zero. And of course, router B acts as the DTE device. Router A now acts as the DCE device. And I can do that with an adapter. So let's go ahead and log into our router. Let me enlarge the terminal here. Enlarge this terminal here so we can. So now let's go to privilege mode and we'll configure our serial connection now that it's connected. So I'm gonna do config T, go to global configuration mode, and I wanna type out interface serial 000, zero um, with forward slashes, or I could just do the shorthand method, uh, int s000, zero zero zero, like that, kinda of like the shorthand way. And we can configure many of the same things we can configure with fast ethernet, but this being a DCE connection, we'll also have to configure a clock rate and we can set the bandwidth. So first we'll start out with the IP command and just like with fast ethernet, look at all of the IP options we have there. But the particular one we're interested in is address and I'm gonna make this a class A. So I'll do 65.10.9.8 for some reason, who knows. And um, for the class, uh, for the subnet mask, we're gonna do class A. So just a normal class A, 255.0.0.0. And remember that a class A address, the first octet or the first byte is the network, you know, the street portion, and the remaining three octets or three bytes are the host portion of the address, the house. So I'll go ahead and enter that. Now, 
this interface is shut down so again I'll need to type in no shutdown or no shut and when I do that it'll bring the interface back up and then I need to do a, a few additional things let's go ahead and set a description and we'll just say connection to a class a network that'll be our description for it so all of those things we've done before with fast ethernet but specifically um, some of the commands that have to do with setting a serial connection would be setting the clock rate. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to just type in the com command clock rate. And if I hit the question mark, notice it'll give me some of the different speeds here. And, um, you know, this is in bits per second. And the default clock rate on a Cisco router, you know, when you take it out of the box, is set for a T1, the bandwidth of a T1, which is 1.544 megabits per second. But you can adjust that, and you might need to change that. Now, for dynamic routing protocols like RIP, Routing Information Protocol, um, bandwidth is not important because it doesn't take that into consideration when it's determining the metric. It's just really counting hops. But more complex, sophisticated dynamic routing protocols like uh, OSPF and IGRP and EIGRP take bandwidth into account. And because of that, it might be important for you to adjust or manually set the, you know, the clock rate and the bandwidth differently on different routers. Um, so we'll look at that, but let's let's go ahead and set the clock rate. So 6400 as the DCE connection. Now, if I had not set this up as DCE, if this were DTE, I would have gotten an error message telling me, hey, this is not DCE equipment. But because we set it up when we connected it as DCE, then it's DCE equipment. Um, okay, and then if I were to set, you know, specify the bandwidth. Bandwidth, again, it's, you know, 64, and this is kilobits per second. So 64,000 would be 64 in terms of bandwidth. And that, again, that can be very useful for some dynamic routing protocols to help them configure the most efficient route to a particular network when there's multiple paths between routers. So I'm going to exit and exit. And I'm going to show my running configuration. And let's go through and look at, here's fast ethernet again, um, what it was, and then let's go down to our serial connection. And now notice that you know, it's up and running. Um, the interface is active because shutdown is not displayed here. Notice there's the description we configured. There's the bandwidth we configured. And then here's the IP address, 65.10.98, and a subnet mask, 255.0.0.0. And there's the clock rate. 18. Information Gathering Command Line Interface Tools. Well, let's look at some information gathering tools that we can use in diagnostics and resolving routing problems. So once again, we'll just kind of review them. And notice that I can do some things um, from user mode. I could do show interface. And in this case, it's letting me know, you know, fast ethernet is up. And get, I can get some information without having to go into privilege mode, but some information is not available to me. And let me look at the, if I try to do startup here, notice it's not available. If I try to do Let's look at the running configure. You know, I have to go to privilege mode for that. So I could, yes, interfaces I can show. There's also another command, show controllers. Um, and let me do S000. And if I do that, I can do this from user mode. I don't have to be in privilege mode to do it. Notice it tells me that it's DCE. That's the, you know, in this case, the type of adapter and cable determines whether it's DCE or DTE. But remember, we set this one to be DCE, and otherwise it would be the default DTE, and that would be displayed, and here's the clock rate. And this gives me some of the physical information about that controller or that interface. And um, I could do the same thing, um, F00, if I did that, and I could show that, for, all from user mode, right? I'm not in privilege mode. But things like show run, uh, you know, show startup, the startup configuration, the running configuration, no. I have to go to privilege mode first. And to do that, enable. And if I had, you know, set up a password, I'd have to type in my password to get there. And that kind of adds a little bit of security to your routers. That way, you know, not just anybody can come in and get potentially, uh, you know, harmful information about your network for hacking the network and things. And if I did, you know, now I can actually display the running configuration. And if I go through, you can look at some of the options here. Here's, again, my fast Ethernet interface. The primary and secondary IP address, and notice that it's it's active and it's running, it's not shut down. Here's my serial interface, the IP address, um, and also in addition the clock rate and the bandwidth has been set. And notice that it also is not shut down, it's active, it's running. 
So information on my, you know, my running configuration, and I could also do look at my startup configuration and notice I can get the version. Okay, in this case that I'm running the IS and it tells me several bits and pieces of information I want, might want to know. Don't forget if we want to save it, I would say copy the running configuration to the startup configuration. And in so doing, then when I reboot the router, um, it's in non-volatile memory or NVRAM now. And so that configuration would be reloaded. If I don't, it's not permanent. You know, if I don't, I lose power, then all the changes I've made would be lost. Um, and it would go back to whatever the last save was to the startup configuration. In addition to those commands, you know, there's show controllers, there's show run, there's show interface. Um, and remember that, that for show run and uh, show start, they only work from privilege mode. Whereas, you know, show controllers works at both user mode and privilege mode. Um, there's other commands we might use. There's the ping command and I'm going to drop, we'll just stay here at privilege mode. And if I do ping... Notice some of the options I can pass in here, IP version 6 or IP, and I can specify some options with ping, but just like in Linux, just like in Windows, like you're used to using, there's the ping command. In addition, there's traceroute, which is the same in Linux, and you know it's trace or RT in uh, Windows, but it does the same thing, and it'll, it'll trace hops from router to router, and I can use that command, <coughs> excuse me, and I can specify options there with traceroute, and I can use telnet, so from one router, if I'm in one router logged in via hyperterminal, I can use that router to telnet to another router. Oops. An extra E there. But if I did that, let me get rid of the... Can't walk and chew gum at the same time. I'm trying to type and talk at the same time. But there, I'll hit the question mark and bring up the options for telnet. All right, so several different tools there, but, but you know, these are just some of the, maybe the, the primary tools that you would use in trying to diagnose and resolve router issues and routing problems, just to get information about your interfaces, and they're available to you at different levels in the IS. 19. Once more, to reset your router's configuration for the next lab, use the command erase startup config. And so finally, if we want to, you know, reset our router for the next few labs we'll be working on, we could just do erase startup config. And I'll hit enter to confirm. And it'll erase the non-volatile RAM or NVRAM. And then if I reload it, the next time my router will come up in a default state. 